Hi, my name is uh, Matt from uh, Faith Word Baptist Church. Just want to invite you to Baptist Church. You go to church anywhere? Yeah, I go to Chestnut Ridge every day. Okay, all right. Well, uh, more importantly, going to church though, do you know for sure if you're going to heaven? Or do you oh, know yeah. about it? Or? Yeah, I got, about four years ago, I prayed to receive Christ. Okay, so you know you're saved. And do you think you could ever, do you think a person can ever lose their salvation? Like if they do something wrong, like I'm saved now, what if I did something, do you think I could ever lose it? Or? I think, yeah, if I killed somebody or killed myself, okay. right? Salvation. Okay. Well, because you know, I believe you know, once you're saved, I believe you're always saved. But maybe give just a few minutes. I can show you why I believe that. Did the Bible? I've heard that. I like to see that. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, and the Bible says in uh, Romans three twenty three. By the way, my name is Matt. What's your name? Justin. Nice to meet you. In uh, Romans three twenty three, you know, the Bible says, um, "For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God." So you I mean you know what sin is, right? You've been in church here. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, I've sinned. You sinned. None of us are perfect, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. Over here in Romans 3.10, it says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. So the Bible says there is none righteous. You know, I'm not self-righteous. I've sinned just like you have. Now, Jesus, on the other hand, we know the Bible says God was manifest in the flesh. The Bible says in him is no sin. So there is no sin in Jesus. You know, Jesus was perfect. Mm -hmm. But, you know, obviously, you know, we're not God. Yeah. So we've all sinned. And the Bible says there's a punishment for sin. Over here in the book of Romans, the Bible says, For the wages of sin is death. Now, do you know what that word wages means in this context? Or, uh, not really. Well, you know, like, um, there's minimum wage on a job, or you work a job to get your wages. So, basically, wages are something we earn. So, the wages of sin is death. So, we sinned, so one day we're going to die, right? Yeah. I mean, either heaven or hell. You know, those are the only two options. Everybody's going to die. Right. Now, it says here, it talks about hell here in the book of Revelation. It says in Revelation 2014, the Bible says, um, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So the Bible says, you know, the lake of fire is the second death. Mm -hmm. I mean, so this, this isn't talking about physical death. This is talking about a spiritual death in a place called the lake of fire. I mean, obviously, we don't want to go to the lake of fire when we die. I mean, obviously, that's not where we want to end up one day. You know, it's a real place, the lake of fire. Yeah, that's right. But um, what do you think a person would have to do to, to be sent to the lake of fire, to deserve that punishment? Because obviously, God doesn't want to send us there. But I think it's something like that, like murder or suicide. Okay. Okay, something like that. Like that nature. Yeah. Because the Bible mentions a lot of things. Over here it says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So you know it mentions murders here, but then it says all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. And you know it doesn't say some liars, you know, it doesn't say most liars, it doesn't say the really bad liars, this is all liars. I've lied before. Have you ever lied? Yeah, I mean I've told lies. Yeah, I mean, we've all told a lot of people, right? <laughs> like I said, I'm not self-righteous. I've sinned just like you have. I mean, obviously, um, you know, God doesn't want to send us to hell, but let me ask you something. Do you have a car? Yeah. Okay. Now, let's say I stole your car, okay? Yeah. Now, if I come before the judge, you know, and I admit to stealing a car, and I tell the judge, you know, yeah, I stole a car, but I've done a lot of good things in my life, too. Is that a good excuse? No. No. So if we tell God, you know, hey, I've lied, I've done what you say is worthy of hell, but hey, I've done some good things. Is that a good excuse? No. So, I mean, we're not going to get to heaven based on how good we are. The good's not going to outweigh the bad. That's the whole reason why Jesus Christ died for us. The Bible says Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. So, he became a curse for us on the cross, you know. And you probably know this. He was on the cross. He was beaten. You know, he was spit at. They pierced him in his side. You know, they took the crown of thorns, you know, into his skull, and they just, you know, paled into his skull, and, and blood was just, like, dripping down. It says his visage was so marred. I mean, you couldn't even recognize him anymore. And the Bible says, you know, he bare our sins in his own body. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions or wounded for our sins. And the Bible says he died not for our sins only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Yeah. So he died for everybody's sins. You know, people in other countries, people from thousands of years ago, he died for everybody's sins. Sure. Now, since he died with our sins upon him, you know, the punishment for sin is, is hell, right? Yeah. Right. So since he died with our sins upon him, he was making that payment. When he died, you know, he went to hell for those three days. I mean, a lot of people aren't aware of that, but he went to hell for those three days because he made the payment for us. He doesn't want us to go to hell, so somebody has to make that payment. So he paid for our sins in hell, and after three days, do you know what happened? Well, he rose again, right? He rose again, right? right? Now, since he did that and made the payment for everyone, is everybody going to heaven? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, no. I mean, there has to be a yeah, I mean, the Bible just says here, you know, it talks about people going yeah. to hell. You know, it says narrow is the way, which is the eternal life. So here it says in um, the book of Romans, it says, Romans chapter 6, I showed you this verse earlier, but for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. So the Bible says, you know, the gift of God is eternal life. Mm -hmm. It says, you know, eternal life for getting to heaven, you know, salvation is a gift. Now, let's say I gave you a gift, okay? Now, if I gave you this, let's say I gave you the Bible as a gift, okay? Who paid for this gift if I'm giving it to you? 
I, th- I mean, give her always. I can't give you a gift and say, all right, cost me five bucks, you know, cough it up. Is yeah, that a gift? It's not a gift. So, I mean, the Bible says that, I mean, are we giving God eternal life, or is he giving us eternal life? He's giving us eternal he's life. He's giving us. So who's paying for it if he's giving it? He did all the cross. Yeah, the gift, and also, you know, he paid for sins. So he's paying for the gifts, and that shows he's God, because, you know, he's paying for it, it's the gift of God. Now, if I told you before I gave you this Bible as a gift, all you got to do is wash my car first. Would that be a gift? Or drive me to the airport first. Would that be a gift? Uh, no, that's right. Yeah, I mean, you'd be... It's a good deal. I mean, yeah, it's a good maybe, deal, I mean, but, but you, not you can do something to earn it, right? Now, if if God said, before I give you eternal life, all you got to do is go to church first. Would that be a gift? Or all you got to do is be baptized first. Or live a good life first. It's not a gift. It's, not a, it's a great deal, but it's not a gift. Yeah. It's, no. See, that's the thing. I mean, a gift, God's not going to lie. He, God is not a man that he should lie. He calls it a gift. Mm-hmm. It's a gift. So now, if I give you this gift, who does it belong to now? Me. It belongs to you. Now, could I take that back from you if I got mad at you? Uh, if no. it belongs to you? I mean, if I give, if you got a Christmas gift, you know, mm. can, can that just be taken back? If you give your girlfriend a gift, can you take that back if you get mad at her? No. No, I mean, that's hers, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'd be stealing from her, though. If it yeah, really was a gift, if you were lying when you call her a gift, you know? God's not a man that he should lie. He's not going to steal. That's one of the Ten Commandments. He gives you eternal life as a gift. Is he going to take that back if you do something wrong? No. Plus, you know, the Bible says that gift is eternal life. Do you know what the word eternal means? Forever. It means forever, right? Exactly. So if you receive eternal life, how long would you have it? Forever. Forever. Could you ever lose it? I mean, yeah, I think you could probably take it back. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Um, like, if you gave, yeah. could you give it back to him? Okay. Well, here's the thing. Let, let's think of it this way. You know, we're going to die physically one day. Mm-hmm. But once we die, you know... It's either heaven or hell. Now, if we go to hell, the Bible calls that the second death. You know, we're spiritually dead and physically. But if we go to heaven, our soul is who we are, right? So if we go to heaven, are we dead? We're not dead. Right. So see, if you receive eternal life here on earth and you go to heaven, hey, you're still alive. You were saying earlier about you know, the thing about once saved, always saved, eternal life. It's, it's a topic that you know, people have different opinions on. Let me show you this here in, um, I'll show you in the book of John, all right? All right. John 3.16. You know that verse, John 3.16? Yeah. The most famous verse in the Bible. Now here it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So the Bible says, whosoever believeth. Now see right here it says, he gave his only begotten Son. See, a lot of people think, i got to give my life to God to get saved. i got to quit drinking, quit smoking, i got to be willing to live for him or something like that. Now, who's giving the gift, us or him? He he's giving. So he's the one giving to us. He gave his only begotten Son. What must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. All it says is believe. It doesn't say you have to give your life to him. No. It's a gift that he's given us. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 yeah I mean, it just says you have to. It says believe, right? right? Yeah, whosoever believeth. Exactly. So, I mean, it says whosoever believeth. Let's say, for example, whosoever is everyone, right? Yeah. If a person was a drunk, but they believe, would they? It says whosoever. Yeah, I mean, they believe that. I mean, they'd be saved. They, absolutely. Whosoever believeth. And him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, you know what the word everlasting means? It's forever, right? It's going to last forever. So that's the thing. See, if you go to heaven, you're not dead because your soul is who you are. But if you ever did anything that could send you to hell, was that everlasting life? No, that's not me. No, I mean, this, this is an important topic. It says, he that believeth on him is not condemned. See, if we believe in him, we're not going to be condemned. We're saved. You know, saved is a, it's a done deal. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. See, the reason why a person is condemned is he, but, uh, he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed. So he's condemned because he didn't believe. Because he never believed that Jesus died and made that payment. You know, that's the reason why he's condemned. You know? It says in John 3.36, it says, um, He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So it says if a person doesn't believe that the Son, the Bible says he shall not see life. Could a person go to heaven if they never believe? If they're a decent person, but they never believe that Jesus died. No, it says shall not see life. So I mean, we, yeah, absolutely. If you don't believe, you cannot go to heaven. I mean, because... All liars shall have their part. Jesus is the only one who came down as God in human flesh and died for us. If we don't accept his payment, who else came? Did Muhammad come down as, in, in, as God? No. Did Buddha? No. No, they're still dead. No, I mean, Jesus is the one who died on the cross for us. So we have to believe on him. So if we don't believe, we can't go to heaven. But it says, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. See, if we believe on the Son, if we believe on Jesus Christ, we have everlasting life. If it's everlasting, it's going to last forever. 